Good deal. Welcome back to Live With, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Visit speciesnutrition.com. I'm Dave Palumbo, and today's guests are returning by popular demand. We had Arnie List on last week. He's back for part two, and joining him is the former owner of the Gold's Gym franchise in Gold's Gym Venice, our good friend Ed Connors. Welcome, guys. Hello, Dave. Hello, Arnie. Hey, Dave. Hey, Ed. Ed, after Arnie and I were talking about Gold's Gym, we got so many people emailing us and texting me, and and uh, and then you started texting me and giving me follow up stories and background stuff on stuff that Arnie and I were talking about. I'm like, we got to get you back on the show because you got you know what happens, Ed? You come on the show, you tell us a lot of great stories, and then when we after the show's over, you wind up telling me ten thousand better stories right after the show's over that you forgot to mention. <laughs> <laughs> How did you hire Arnie List? I'm sure I was struck by his uh, his personality, and and uh, I think uh, you were talking with Chris Aceto the other day, and Chris said, "Yeah, Ed hired everybody," but that's not true at all. Uh, I mean, when I when I hired Chris or Arnie, I mean, I saw something, a passion for what they were, and a great personality, uh, and that that's a rare thing to find, and harder nowadays than ever. You like the New England guys, though. You, you used to bring all those guys over. Well, they have a work ethic, I think, or, or an East Coast um, sensibility, uh, you know, where they're, I think a lot of people think, uh, well, a lot of them even don't make the transition because they, they, they miss the, the, uh, the pace of New York or the East Coast. And um, I, I do think, yeah, Arnie definitely had a New England work ethic, and so did Chris. But I got to ask you, Ed, where did you get the audacity to open up the Gold's Gym in that Hampton location, Hampton Avenue, whatever location, when it was in the middle of gangland? I didn't know that when you first opened it. There. Arnie told me last week. Well, it, it was kind of well, a daring move. First off, I was, I was working for Charles Eanes uh, down the street. I don't know if you know famous American designer now dead who – the Eames Lounge chair was probably one of his most well-known uh, uh, designs. But uh, I was working, that was a, the corner of Abbott Kinney and uh, Brooks, which is now the, supposedly, Abbott Kinney's the hottest street in America. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was the biggest the dirtbag street when you guys were there. And uh, now it's like crazy. Uh, Rodeo but, Drive of Venice. Yeah. Uh, I, I was, this was 1980, 1980 and... Uh, Tim Pete and I, or Tim eventually bought Gold's Gym in Santa Monica when it was in Santa Monica in 19, February 1979. And our, our landlord was Robert Blake, who was a Beretta. star TV show called Beretta, which probably yeah. most of your listeners have never heard of. <laughs> I, I mean, oh, I, I, guess, have. I guess I can say he was a bad guy because I think he's in jail for murdering his wife or having his wife. He murdered. got off. He got off. He, he somehow beat the charges. Oh, my God. Well, uh, he wasn't a nice guy, nor were his attorneys. They were going to triple our rent. And so uh, I'm, I'm working down in Venice for an architectural firm and actually living down there, too. And uh, I saw this vacant uh, fourth bay of a four bay warehouse uh, at uh, Sunset and, and Hampton. And I thought, well, let's why don't we move Venice back to its roots? And the, the Santa Monica, the original Gold's Gym was around 4,200 square feet. The location at 2nd Street and 1452 2nd Street in Santa Monica was 4,400 square feet. And I, uh, the, the first bay of that warehouse with the, with the mezzanine was 6,600 square feet. So it would be, uh, you know, a move where we could, we could uh, grow the gym a bit. Right. So we moved it back to Venice. But, you know, Arnie uh, is quite right that it was, it was gangland back then. And, uh, but I think we did a lot to clean up the neighborhood. I remember, uh, well, after... After the you know the first couple of break-ins uh, and our members retaliated against the gang members, I think they <laughs> were off limits. <laughs> um, I should I should back up a little bit. I, besides our landlord, I was I, I had three jobs at the time. I was one of the owners of Gold's Gym Venice, and I was uh, 
working as an architect uh, for the Eames office, and I was also a parking consultant. That was one of my specialties. And I was working on the, the garage that Frank Gehry uh, was uh, designing for the Santa Monica Mall. Uh -huh. And I, I knew the neighborhood was about to change. I mean, back then, you could throw a bowling ball down the 3rd Street promenade and not hit anybody. And now it's, of course, one of the hottest shopping areas in the world. Yeah. Yeah. But, but back then, you know, it, it was pretty sleepy. Um, you know, the Gold's Gym was next to the Pussycat Theater. And, uh, you know, it was just... <laughs> Even Santa Monica was kind of derelict or run down or, or not yep. doing well. But I also didn't like the Santa Monica police. They were they were very tough on our members. And, I mean, seeing seeing the, the police uh, handcuff the Barbarian Brothers and put them in the back. No of way. Of their, of their cop. Here we go. <laughs> for for parking tickets. Uh, and they, they would give our members jaywalking uh, tickets from walking across the street from the parking garage. <laughs> to the you, what you would the Barbarian Brothers park wherever they wanted? Probably, they, I think they ran up uh, ten, twenty grand in parking. You know, they're the Barbarian <laughs> Brothers. I mean, you know, would you expect them to, to obey parking laws? It doesn't. Do it. Uh, That's so funny. You know, Ed. I uh, recently I I uh, met the guy who was in. He did the. Uh, he spearheaded the. Um, the Apple store down, you know, the big Apple store that they just put down by the third street promenade, right. you know, that to speak to your point, that store leased for the most amount of money ever, I think in us history, like not like $10,000 a school, something crazy. Mm -hmm. It's the most expensive real t retail space. I think in, in the U S it was just, and that's, you know, that's part of what's been going on in Venice and Santa Monica. And now Venice has become the hot spot. You, I'm sure you know it's not Venice Beach anymore. It's called Silicon Beach. So yeah. you have Google and Snapchat and Facebook, and that's also further increased all the rent, the leases and everything, and it's pushing more and more people out of Venice. And frankly, I, you know, I don't know the details, but I do know that, uh, or I think I know, the guy who owns the building in Venice also owns the building across the street who is leased by Google and that kind of stuff. So um, I'm curious to see what the future of Venice Golds there is. I don't think it's good, but uh, Arnold, yeah. Arnold is probably the only reason it's there right now. Really? Uh, yep. Uh, but, you know, getting back to my story, so between our landlord and the, the parking situation, which I knew would be exacerbated, I thought we need to go back to our roots. And uh, that really is, was about the only building still, uh, there's very little commercial real estate available in Venice that could, could, uh, could, could work that way. And what about so that I, world gym that was on the corner that Joe Gold bought? Was, had that he was, owned that? That was much later. Oh. Uh, uh, when, when, when Joe Gold opened up the world gym, uh, it was in Santa Monica on the main street. Uh, and it was a, a multi-story building uh, that the location at Brooks, ironically at Brooks, where I was working, and and uh, Main Street or or Avakini, uh, that that was uh, the the uh, that was the second location of World Gym. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. And then and the third location was, of course, on Washington Boulevard in Rio right. del Rey. Right. But um, so anyway, we we moved the gym back to Venice. Tim Kimber uh, worked a brilliant deal uh, with Heart to Heart. Uh, they were filming a, a TV show, and uh, uh, God bless uh, Robert Wagner. He he sprained his back, and so Tim had in the contract that every extra day they needed would would double the the fee. So we, <laughs> we were basically all in the fine print. <laughs> but but uh, they ended up paying us almost sixty five grand for for uh, for the fees, and then also moved the gym from Santa Monica down to Venice. Wow. So uh, I mean, uh, so it was an amazing time and. You know, there was, Arnold's office was at the gas company building across the street. You know, our, our eventual neighbor to the north was uh, the James Cameron studio uh, uh, that did the Titanic and, ironically, the uh, Terminator film there. Oh, they were right there, right by Gold's? Right, next next door. Yeah, we had a lot of uh, people from that studio as, as, as members. Wow. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> This is something Ed, that I think that I think a lot of people don't know is that when I walked into Venice in the 90s, when I got there, you know, people talk about Showtime and the Lakers and everything. But Venice, 
everybody who was anybody of any influence in their industry and in their endeavor. You know, Frank Gary, who you mentioned, he was a member. I think he's still a member there. You know, um, we had Magic Johnson, Colby Bryant. Uh, you know, half of the Dodgers were there. Lyle Alzado. I mean, the list could just go on. And Keanu Reeves worked out there three, four times a week. Uh, you know, James Kahn. Just so many people that were in that gym and that were – it was really – it, it, you guys took Golds in Venice from not just a bodybuilding gym to it was really an experience to be in that environment. You had Gregory Himes, yeah, you know, so favorite, many people. You know, one of our favorite, our favorite slogans of mine was, was uh, serious fitness for everybody. And, and yeah. what we were, I mean, we, you know, people say, oh, you know, there, there's no money in bodybuilding or that, you know, we, you can't do a bodybuilding gym. But uh, I mean, it worked for us, and I think it could work for anybody if they're all inclusive. And Ed, uh, you you never charged any pro bodybuilders or the top bodybuilders. Everyone trained for free there, you know, right? Our, our our outside accountant made us keep track of uh, how many the dollar value of our memberships that we gave away, along with the clothing. We averaged probably about seventy thousand dollar a month in, in free memberships and clothing. Wow! I didn't I didn't yeah. want uh, Pete Tim and I didn't want these actors or celebrities pain i mean if nothing else i i thought it would make it more difficult for them to sue us but, <laughs> uh, but Which? They, they, i i hoped and most of them were class acts i hoped that if if we were nice to them they would be nice to our members and wouldn't be so bothered if somebody wanted an autograph or picture right. and i don't i don't remember many complaints and people like james Kahn were were really giving and you know like father figures or mentors to some of the people in the gym they were, yeah. they, were all, they were all they were all class acts. Uh, yeah. uh, they were really uh, it was it was a wonderful wonderful synergy. When, yeah. Ed, when you looked at the funny... gym and you were in there and you would look over the gym and you'd see all these celebrities and every top pro bodybuilder in there, did you feel like like a proud father almost? Because a lot of you were responsible for bringing most of those people there anyway, at least the bodybuilders. Well, um, I you know it, it's. To me, I, I just was, uh, I saw, I, I would see something in people and uh, I, I would think, uh, you know, what could I do to, to help them to bring that, that whatever that was out. Uh, it's just, you know, I mean, like Arnie had a, a great personality and look and uh, that's what I, I, I was involved in 37 Gold's Gyms over time, uh, 19 at one point, but I, I, I wanted people working the front counter or in it, you know, who were the beautiful people or, or had right. the personality to sell memberships and change lives. And, uh, same way too, I, I realized, I mean, like when I met John Cena in the parking lot, you've probably heard that story, but, uh, I just said, you know, have you ever thought about professional wrestling? And his exact words were, it would be my dream. Wow. Yeah. But, yeah. but you know, three of the four people I approach, you know, uh, blow me off and, uh, and then <laughs> Other people are just lazy, uh, or you know, or, or can't imagine, and that's actually true more so now than ever. Uh, you'd think with social media or all the sources we have for communication that it would be easier to to reach contact people, but I mean, you'll you'll hear about this guy, Dave. But I mean, just, and Arnie, I hate to hog this conversation. Um, that's okay. But you know, n nine weeks ago on the inter on the internet, I met this big Russian bodybuilder, and I said. God, you know, you know, you look, you look like you you should be working for five percent. And <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, I was, and, and he he was kind enough or open enough to, you know, say, well, you know, I, I'll talk to you. I mean, most of the, especially Eastern Europeans, uh, you know, are basically are Brazilians or in a lot of the South American talent I see. They don't, they think I'm crazy, I guess. But <laughs> Russians. Uh, I was sitting with him, I think November 12th, in the offices of 5%, and they hired him. So he and his wife are now living in Miami. So here's this 31-year-old Russian bodybuilder who's the biggest thing I've ever seen. What's his name? Uh, Ilya Yefemchik. Wow. Y yeah, that's a tongue twister. Um, you know, it's so, so I, interesting. I, you know, I, I changed a life without with so totally. little work and. Like in, that. In nine weeks, he's he's you know he's gone from uh, Minsk to uh, Miami. <laughs> Minsk to Miami. <laughs> um, totally. And totally, Ed. It's 
you know, and he's going to revive. He's going to help five percent. But you know, Rich Rich Piano was one of my best friends and and someone I miss very much. But but the company hasn't been the same, and I'm hoping that uh, he will he will help uh, he will help five percent like Rich would have wanted. Yeah, you know, it's it's. Uh... You know, I call that it's that you're blessing somebody's life. I mean, you blessed my life not knowing who I was. Not, and you had no idea what, what my backstory was. And it's the same kind of thing. You just had the courage to actually have some compassion and maybe a possibility that maybe this person could be somebody who needs something that I can help them with to get their life to the next point. And I, man, I remember when I went back to Vermont because I, I didn't want to be there from the time I was – when I read Arnold's book and I read his about how he got out of Germany and and all that, I was looking for something. And bodybuilding for me turned into a vehicle to where I was able to escape the life that I really I didn't I just didn't want it. It wasn't for me. I always knew it from a very early age. And when that opportunity came, I mean, I went back home and left. And I I don't know if you remember, I didn't even call Ed. Uh, Dave until I was in Arkansas. So I drove all the way to Vermont to Arkansas, you know, the land of opportunity, right? And I call up Ed, and I'm like, uh, hey, I, Ed, I hope you're serious about this job because I'm on my way. I said, I'm not going back to Vermont, and I'm definitely not staying in Arkansas. And he's like, oh, hey, and I say, yeah, you're, come on out. I got my house. You can stay in one side. And, and uh, you know, it just it changed my whole life. Sometimes uh, we can meet one person. And that one person can replace 12, 15 years of schooling or whatever it is that we're doing because they, they're, they're, they're willing to help. Because so many people in life that we, we all need help. Of, and in, in some point in our life, we need somebody to – we can't do it all alone. So whatever it is that we're passionate about, whatever is our dream is, you can't do it all by yourself. You know, And that's part of what – is a little bit concerning for me with we're talking about social media is because that personal interaction, in my opinion, is one of the most important things in the world is to have actual personal interaction with a person because there's something different, obviously, about having a, you know, you're there in person, you shake their hand, you look them in the eye, all these kind of things that you can't get those virtually. You just right, can't. Right. Hey, Orange. And, uh, Ed, Ed told me that um, when Titus punched you in the face, that he, he didn't kick you out. He only kicked uh, Titus out. You said he kicked yeah. you out, too. Well, I got kicked out. So here's the thing. <laughs> you know, there's – yeah, and I'm not saying that Ed did it. It's You know, I, if I had to guess, and I don't know for sure, right, if I'm going to get kicked out of the gym and I get in a fight with another guy – I, and I'm and I'm getting kicked out. I probably want the other guy to get kicked out too, right? Like, why should I get kicked out? He didn't get kicked out. And I don't know. You'd have to ask. I don't. I think maybe Mike Ryan was the manager at the time, and maybe Ed went. I mean, uh, uh, Craig might have squawked a little bit, and we both got kicked out. I mean, so uh, I went and trained at some gym that uh, was over on. Uh, it was over at like in Maxella. I forget. There was a guy that opened a gym that used oh, to be a member at Gold. What was it called, Ed? Angel's Gym? Yeah. Oh, I've actually been there. Yeah. I've been there. Yeah, so I went and trained there, and it's funny because right before I – right after – there was a couple days before I got kicked out between the fight with Craig and whatever. And so after I got my lights punched out, I figured I better start working out a little bit. So I went and worked out, and I <laughs> – hurt my dude I pulled the trap in the back of my neck doing dumbbell curls yeah and so I the whole time I trained at uh, at that gym I had a neck brace <laughs> that, people <laughs> thought it was from Titus probably yeah people thought it was from the fight but it had nothing to do with the fight it was from I strained my trap trying you know arching my back doing something but it was, well, Dave, it Dave, was I don't remember suspending very many people uh but Craig Titus, I suspended three times. The last time, <laughs> and, you, and you loved Craig too. Well, I, I don't. Know if, I mean, I, I really, um, I, I wouldn't. You know, he was. Uh, it was very frustrating because you know he'd been. In, he's been in jail now three times, and the second, the first time was in Houston, I think, or Texas, for selling ecstasy. The second time, again, I think it was it was selling ecstasy, but California, yeah. <laughs> He was uh, he was in Lompoc, California, at the a federal uh, penitentiary, 
And I gave up three weekends to drive up there to see him and bring supplements and magazines. And I, you know, I wrote him letters and sent, you know, uh, money for extra food. And, and uh, you know, I, I all we had all these plans that he would come out and uh, start a new career. And, you know, I think I saw him all of 15 minutes after he got out of jail. And then wow. he, moved, he moved to Vegas and got involved in uh, recreational drugs and you know, now he's in jail for murder. So it, it's just, um, you know, I I loved all these guys or gals that I met. And, and uh, but, you know, you can only do so much and then you kind of just, uh, you have to move on. I, I would give people second and third chances like nobody would believe. But you, but you, don't, you don't think I Craig killed story. that girl, right? I've got a story. I have to tell you. Hold on, story hold on. Hold on. Like, um, yeah. Arnie, yeah. You don't think Craig yeah, killed yeah. Like, um, Melissa James, do you, Ed? I don't think he killed her, no. You think Kelly killed her? Because, again, look, let's just look at Arnie's situation. If, if, Craig, if, Craig, it, it's, if Craig had wanted to kill this woman, he wouldn't have used a taser. He would have just hit her or, or strangled her up, right? I mean, he didn't need the, these toys. Uh, it's like when 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 Mike Matarazzo's girl, first wife girlfriend came to me with a black eye and said, said, you know, Mike hit me. I said, I don't believe you. If he had hit you, you'd be dead. <laughs> he, he had actually punched herself in the face to gain sympathy. Wow. I mean, so he did. You know, Craig, Craig, wow. was, uh, Craig was tough. So uh, I really don't. Uh, I think he's just, you know, trying to cover for his wife. But yeah. You know, it's it's funny what I said to you, Ed, when you mentioned that. It's, you know, I don't know whether he did or whether he didn't. I mean, only Craig and Kelly know, really. But I said, you know, love is a powerful motivation when somebody really loves their wife. I mean. Well, it would be nice if it really, you know, was really that uh, loving because, I mean, it's, I used to give the, the pro bodybuilders, uh, you know, wives, obviously, a membership, too. And and oftentimes their girlfriend, but but Craig would come to me every other week with a new girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I said Craig, you know, unless you're married, I can't I can't keep doing this because Tim, it's not fair to Pete and Tim or me. Sure, your your seventy thousand is going up to one hundred and seventy thousand every month. <laughs> <laughs> you give it away all kinds of membership. You got to you got to give to get, and and uh, you know I mean uh, you know. Eddie Murphy wore our Gold Gym jacket on the MTV Awards for three or four hours. You know that kind of publicity you can't you can't buy. You couldn't do it now. No. But uh, yeah. this is before social media. You know all the magazines. We, you know, we had the the, the stripe over the mirrors announcing. We, not even now with social media, you know someone's shooting in Gold's Gym because of, of that uh, name over the mirror. Did you many, do that? Was that you, yeah, Ed? Yeah. How many how many gyms miss that easy? Uh, a, a way of, of getting recognition. The, what uh, Ed's talking about is this this tape. It's like gold gym tape across the mirrors. So when you if you shoot anything and you see the mirrors, you'll see the gold gym striping in there. Yeah, it's a good idea. I didn't you know you came it, up with that. You could pick up a, any Weider, any fitness magazine back then, and right. I mean, there, there were you know scores of pages with uh, basically free publicity for us because they were they were shooting in the gym with a name and and also the guys or gals are wearing our clothing. Who was the most deadly guy in the gym, Arnie? Do you think, like, uh, is from a standpoint of you wouldn't want to mess with them? Uh, I have an answer. This is, it's, it's, it's fine. I think. Okay. I'm Let's see if you guys have the same answer. answer. That's the question. See if we have the same answer. So I uh, now before I say this, I know this will probably make this guy feel good, but maybe he's matured a little bit to where he understands that he's a different person now. Maybe he is. So I was thinking about there's certain personalities that when they came into the gym, the atmosphere in the gym shifted, right? They, they had such a personality, whatever it was, that when they came in, they shifted. And the first one that came to mind was Mike Christian, right? Mike Christian was that guy that was so much bigger than life, had a way positive personality, just was all that, right? Gregory Himes had that also, you know, um, but when you go in the other way, there's one guy that when he came into the gym, you didn't know what was going to happen. Now, I never witnessed anything, but Mike Quinn was a guy from back east that when, he, when Mikey came into the gym, it was a different edge, right? Because he's a guy from 
I don't want to say outside people know who he is, but he's not a regular in the gym. And he was a guy that had, uh, he was aggressive, you know, he was aggressive. So, um, again, never saw Mike fight. Don't know anything about that, but he was a guy that when I was in the gym, even when I wasn't working, if he was in the gym, I always wanted to know where he was at. <laughs> I always wanted to kind of, you know, because you don't know if dumbbells are going to come flying your way that missed somebody. You get caught in the crossfire. You know, you take a left hook that was meant for somebody else. And you get, he was, a he, for me, he was the guy that I was just like, okay, Mike's in the gym. Let's keep our, put the radar on, you know. Dave, he was, uh, Mike Quinn was a house guest with Joe Miko, who's now deceased. Yeah, I, I remember. Joe, Joe died from Lyme disease. But, yeah, I, I didn't. I never saw that side of Mike. I would have answered Lyle Alzado to your question. That's what I thought oh, you were going to say. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I have a funny story for you, speaking of Lyle Alzado. This will give you, when I, um, when I first got the golds and I was working, Lyle Alzado was, a, I mean, he was a human being, but he was part animal. He was, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was. And so Ed was asking me earlier, did, when you came out to California, did you come by yourself or did you, you had your girlfriend? Well, my my first wife, Susan, came to California with me. We have two daughters. And Susan and I were standing, uh, we were training in the squat rack and Lyle was in the, the power box next to us. And um, I never spoke to Lyle. He was a guy that I didn't talk to. When he came in, I just kind of took a half a step back from the counter and he never checked nothing right he just went in and uh I, <laughs> crazy we were we so we here we are working out and he comes over to us and he says i swear to god doesn't say anything else to us he says and i never spoke to him he says you guys look so good i don't know which one of you i want to beep like that <laughs> i said it's not going to be either one. And that was the only time I spoke to Lyle. He, he, was, he came in with, a lot of times he hung out with uh, Rick Valeni. And, um, yeah, Lyle was a character for sure. <laughs> so you, you almost got raped by Lyle Alzado. Well, no, I never opened that. I never even got in that situation. But that's, I mean, you know, there was some animals in that gym. You know, you didn't Lyle didn't up. Lyle want to beat up David Paul, one of the Barbarian brothers, Ed? Yes, right. Yeah, Lyle Lyle told me he said, Ed, if you ever have any problems with anyone in the gym, uh, talk to me because I can take anybody in this gym. <laughs> <laughs> and he did get into a fight with the Barbarian brothers. I forget what it was over. Over a girl, wasn't it? Wasn't the, his ex girlfriend or something? I I don't I don't know. I, I don't, think David I, was sleeping with his ex girlfriend or something like that, right? Wow, well, I don't. Or his I wife, ex wife, or something like that. I think. I gotta right. ask. I gotta ask. I, I forgot the story. John Romano knows the story. Yeah, John might be a good one to check on that. <laughs> yeah. The other thing, speaking of John Romano, the other guy that was in the gym that I think anybody who knows bodybuilding, Dan Duchesne was there. Dan Duchesne and John were, you know, they would come in the gym in the morning together. And at that time, uh, Dan was the guru. Yeah. And John, John was with him all the time. So, I mean, it's no wonder that, uh, I mean, I think, I don't really know, but I'm guessing that John probably went on to understand more about certain things than Dan did. Um, but he, I mean, I think that's where he got his roots. You'd have to ask him. You I don't know, really Dan know. Duchesne is from Maine. He actually went to the same gym that Chris Aceto used to train at in Maine. Isn't that weird? Chris would see him there in the summers. Yeah. I mean, I think there's a real correlation between your geographic location and your blessing. I know mine was in, in Venice. And was but, there yeah. a big, was there a, I mean, what was, before, you know, steroids became like controlled substances. I mean, was it rampant in the gym? I mean, did you see it? I mean, was it like pretty obvious? Are well, you asking? Ed? I'm asking yeah. Ed. Yeah. Uh, it, it was. It was. I don't. I don't. I didn't see it in the gym, but it was definitely. It was part of the scene for yeah. sure. Because it uh, wasn't a big deal. It was like kind of underground, but it wasn't like it. Con it wasn't illegal at the time. Yeah. I, yeah. It was. It was. It wasn't a controlled substance. Right. So it was. It was. You know. I mean, every, everybody was doing it. Really. I, right. I think. Uh, yeah. 
I mean, because Steve Mahalik's gym, Mr. America's in Long Island, there would be syringes in the ceiling. I mean, because <laughs> during that era, they would do their shots in the locker room. I mean, did you have that yeah. stuff at Gold's, or was it? Would you not no, allow not, that? It was nothing like that. No, it, you know, it was nothing like Steve Mahalik's gym. That's oh. for sure. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I John Defendis was a house guest uh, very yeah. early on, and I remember his stories about Steve. And my God, it just uh, <laughs> that, that was you know, crazy. Uh, yeah. Who, who was the biggest, and you both can answer this question of all the people Ed brought to California or maybe not even brought to California. When the person walked in the gym, who was the biggest, like, Oh my God, who is this guy? Like, who is the biggest shocker to come into that gym from out of state? Was it Matarazzo? I mean, was, who was it, Ed? I, I think Lee Priest. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. You may be right. Yeah. When you brought him over at 19? Well, I didn't bring him over. He was, uh, he was, Lou's wicked, encouraged him to come to California. And I, get, I think Lee put his uh, plane ticket on his uncle's uh, credit card. <laughs> and uh, he was stranded. You know, he was in the gym, but basically, uh, uh, you know, well, he was stranded. Um, Irv Gell, the photographer, saw him and brought him over to my office. And uh, we took some Polaroids in, in the, uh, uh, studio and uh, sent them to Joe Weider. And uh, in the meantime, you know, I said, Lee, well, you can stay at my place. And so uh, uh, he was there with two other house guests and uh, stayed there for five months until the Weider contract took took hold. But he was he turned 21 in my house. So he was 20 years old then. Crazy, crazy. This was 19, 1993. Did you know he was going to be a great pro? Yeah, he was. He was, again, probably the most I'd have to say the most incredible bodybuilder I'd ever seen, and I'd still put him there, maybe number one. He, if he'd been two inches taller, he yeah. could have probably been Mr. Olympia. He was only 5'3", which, uh, you know, uh, Flex Lewis and, and uh, Derek Lunsford are 5'5", five, five, which is really the, the ideal height. Mm -hmm. But, but you know, for a 20-year-old kid, and, and basically taking nothing. Yeah, he was uh, very... He, I mean, he, he was staying at my much. place, you know, and he had no money, and I... I, I I must have given him anything he was taking, and God knows we, we would hear rumors about this this uh, dwarf or someone in Venice taking. They, you know how the the rumors would go from the East Coast to the West Coast about the new freaks, and yeah. Lee and I, I think remember laughing over that that they we kind of figured out they were talking about him. <laughs> but, I mean, there was yeah, there was no growth hormone. He was he was 215 pounds at five three with 21 and a half inch biceps. Crazy. Uh, I really can't think of anybody that was just as, uh, you know, as that polished at that age. Right. I met I met Paul DeMeo at 19 and Jay Jay at 19, but you know they they weren't they weren't that they weren't ready to go on stage. Yeah. yeah. Um, they were works in, in progress still. Right. Who was the who's you think had the greatest genetics in bodybuilding? I, I'll ask both of you guys that uh, from all the people that walked through those doors. Go ahead, uh, Arnie. Arnie, you go did first. We, did we lose Arnie? Oh, we lost Arnie. All right, you go, Ed, tell us. Uh, I would say Matt Mendenhall. Really? And, and it's sad that he never Abe was able to or, pull it all together. Or Jeff, or Jeff King. Jeff King was a house guest. Um, I, I think Arnie's trying to get on. Yeah. Uh, but, we'll, get, yeah we'll get Arnie, we'll get Arnie Jeff back. Jeff King, Matt Mendenhall. Um, what was what was the deal with Mendenhall? Was it that it, it was dating Rachel McLeish? Was that was was that a distraction for him? I think he was so good that he had to literally beat himself. He had, in other words, the, the judges I think gave him second place four times, and that that's kind of a shame because you're you know, you're, you're you're dealing with someone's life in the future. You know, someone who could have made an enormous difference. Right. I think, and uh, I mean, you know, he had to be just you know, right on to, uh, to be perfect. I think at the time he was drinking a lot of beer. I don't think people knew that. Oh, really? Drinking beer was that, you know, harmful to achieving that look they wanted on stage. Probably I think the yeast retained too much water or something. I mean, Which is weird. Bodybuilders don't really drink alcohol. It's like a very well, odd, you know, habit this to was, have. This was an earlier time where where guys but they didn't drink wine or hard drinks, they drank beer if they drank. Right. I mean, Matt was from uh, Cincinnati, Ohio, and um, 
you know, it was the Midwest, the big beer drinking states. Um, and, and he could drink, I mean, I, you know, he could drink unbelievable amounts of, of alcohol. That's uh, awesome. <laughs> it's like I, I can still remember. I, I don't think I've ever seen anybody able to do that. <laughs> but that may have been the one thing he should have cut out that would have made the difference. But right. um, he's now a chiropractor in Denver, and I, I think happy with his life. And um, he probably lived a lot longer. Yeah, because of, because of the fact he got out of bodybuilding. Well, you you, you don't know. I mean, J.P. Fuchs uh, said that to me that yeah. his his leg injury was a blessing. Told me, that, yeah, he took, he takes, he comes and takes my training course every uh, year, and he's he said the same thing. He's like, you know what? I'd be dead now if I was uh, if I didn't tear those quads. See, he, he would, he would, he was at the house. He stayed at the house with Matt Duvall, who's now deceased. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, they were uh, uh, they were taking things to the extreme, and and you know he was uh, he, he was very he was Swiss, but he's very German, very hardcore. Like yeah. I must train, I must eat, I must sleep. You know that. I must do whatever to get big. <laughs> and now you told me you're working on a new gym concept. What, what's that about? Well, I, I really need to I, didn't I send you my pitch deck? I don't think you sent it to me. I, I will send it. It's, it's right. too hard to explain on your, on your call, but I, I'm trying, you know, the, the amazing realization I have is that the, the millennials aren't like the people that helped make Gold's Gym famous in the 80s and early 90s. Mm -hmm. Ironically, it was during that same period when they were being born, but but they're not like Arnie List, you know, or you. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm trying to come up with something that I think would would appeal to that generation. Or what is it going to be like a like a selfie camera on every machine? Built well, machines? actually, there's so, there's so much going on in it they wouldn't even be able to use their phone. <laughs> you know, once you're in once you're in this gym, you you not have a chance to look on your phone. So it would be it would be quite different. But I'll send you my my presentation. We can talk about it another time. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. You know, it's funny because uh, I mean, you were so successful in gold. You sold it. Obviously, you made money. Um, you know, did you have buyer uh, sellers remorse after you let it go? No, not at all. Uh, you know, twenty five years is is a long time to own something, and uh, I think we were all getting kind of tired. Um, Pete Grimkowski had triple bypass surgery uh a month or two after we sold i had it uh well, we sold in in 04 i had triple bypass in 08 wow so you know it, it uh i don't know how i did it frankly i mean it's 100 hours a week and it never seemed like work but um no i mean it's 25 years you know joe gold only owned uh, uh gold's gym for uh five years true but then he had world gym after that right he eventually started world but uh yeah, when he died, he had 700 members. We when 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 we sold, we had 12,000. That's crazy. And how many uh, franchisees did you have? We had we had 704 uh, gyms, and uh, uh, now uh, last year, when the current owners of Golds wanted to sell, they they had 705 locations. They showed in their in their uh, uh, perspective. <laughs> They're lucky so they, they had that many because I know they lost a lot because they were charging they ridiculous lost, amounts lost of money. Great. Well, you know, over half of them are overseas. We we now have almost a hundred gyms in Japan, gold gyms in Japan. Wow! And there are a hundred in India. So yeah, over half are overseas. Do you think? I mean, I know you got this new concept, but do you think there could ever be a chain as successful? Uh, could, in other words, could it be reproduced, or was that like a one-time thing that just it was at the right place at the right time? I, I believe the prototype I have could be just as as, as successful, if not more so. Is that do you think this is going to be your legacy? Is this is this like your uh, your I'm next hoping, great idea? I'm hoping both you know are my legacy. Well, Gold's is already your legacy, but I'm saying it'd be nice if you could do another one. Yeah, I mean it's uh, Gold's worked for the time. I mean, just, just think. I mean, I, I just think of it, Dave. I mean, can you imagine? Forty five years ago, uh, Arnold had to go from Graz, Austria, to, to Venice to get a workout, <laughs> and, and now now you can go to you know. Where I where I'm living right now, within a mile, there are 13 choices. Right. No, it's uh, true. It's true. They, people, pe uh, millennials or most young people have no idea how, how much things have changed. Yeah, you're right. You're right, 100. percent You uh, you know, you changed the course of the gym industry, really, with Gold's Gym. I mean, that was the prototype that everyone kind of used as a, a modicum of, 
hey, this is what we want to make our gym like. I mean, I'm sure there were plenty of people that would fly out to Venice Gold to look at the gym and ask questions and see how it was right. laid out. And they went and they, they, they mimicked it back wherever they were opening their gyms. Well, we, we evolved and, and being an architect, I looked at many plans and tried to, I didn't, I didn't want a cookie cutter approach to Gold's Gym because I wanted you to know, uh, I wanted you to have a different experience at each club. I mean, we weren't selling hamburgers. You don't want that kind of consistency. <laughs> You know, you want it, if you're in Moscow, you want the gym to reflect that, that look, that, uh, that area. Right. right. The Gold Gym Moscow had a, had a full-time uh, fur coat check lady. <laughs> that, that wouldn't exist anywhere else. In Not in Venice, place. that's for sure. No. Uh, what, you, know, you know what I loved about Gold's? I loved all the pictures you had in the walls. It seemed like um, they kind of abandoned that whole... You know, well, it's shame. You know, it's it's very motivational. I, you know, I would give all, you know, I would give all the priests and all the churches I, I went to over the years free memberships, and uh, I remember one of them. Uh, I was it was Father Glassman at Saint Saint Monica's, and I was there. He he had no way of. I mean, there were eleven hundred people in church, and he had no way of knowing that I was there. And he said, "Yeah, just as." Just as we, just as Gold's Gym has the, have their Olympians on the wall, their heroes, we we have our saints. And he, you know, he waved his hand to the stained glass windows. But but the same way the Catholic Church used yeah. uh, imagery to to uh, motivate people, I think you know having those photos up there was inspiring. Absolutely, absolutely. And, I, and then uh, and then they, you know, the new owners just didn't really follow up with it. You know. Well, yeah, they're. I mean, they're just. I hate to say they're just clueless. I mean, they've got nobody on their board that has any experience. And, uh, I mean, they've lost so many great operators. And it's just, uh, yeah. I, you know, uh, it's greed and stupidity. They charged, uh, they're charging 7% of gross revenue, which is way beyond. I mean, Pete, Tim, and I just charged $1,000 a month flat fee. Right. No, that's, that's totally reasonable. So, so for a typical owner, you're talking six, seven times the franchise fee. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Well, I hope the new concept works. When you're ready to uh, roll it out, you'll come back on the show. We'll talk about that. Ed, always a pleasure to talk to you, get you on the show, get your insights into things. Thanks for joining us today. And uh, I'm sure we'll have you back again. And, and I'm sure as soon as I hang up with you, you're going to text me 40 stories that, uh, that we, we probably should have talked about. <laughs> I remember one last one about Lyle Azedo. All right. When he when he came in with Howie Long to get a free membership for Howie, I looked at Howie and I said, "God, you, you know, you got a great look. Uh, you you know, if you if you work in that body, maybe you could go somewhere in the movies or, or entertainment industry." Yeah. And uh, what he say? He nearly jumped over the counter to punch me out. Thank God Lyle was there. But, you know, <laughs> and that's what he wound up doing. Yeah, I mean, but he had a look. And how did I know he had a look? I mean, you know, it was to me pretty obvious. But yeah. anyway, Howie Long is still. On TV, yeah. No, you have you. Have, I'll give you one thing. You got a great eye for talent. You, <laughs> you, and you find these guys before they're successful, and it's like you're almost like a prophet, you know. And I think a lot of them don't even believe what you tell them. They think you're just schmoozing them, you know. Maybe after we get off this, uh, look up Ilya Efemchik. Okay. Oh, that's the guy. Okay. Okay. We will. Enough. All right, Ed. Thanks so much, and uh, have a great one. And uh, I appreciate you coming on the show. Take care. Bye. All right, guys, and uh, I want to just thank Arnie List. I know we lost him. I don't know what happened, but we'll have him back uh, probably the next, probably after the holidays, uh, to do the, the the part three with Arnie List. And obviously, Ed has uh, got chock full of stories, and I know I can extract a lot more from him in future episodes. <laughs> I know if you guys have any uh, stories of your own from Gold's Venice, and you want to send them over to me to remind me so I can tell Ed about them and we can hear the story. Feel free to put them in the comments below. For now, though, I'm Dave Palumbo for Ed Connors and Arnie List. We'll see you next time.